Pats. Uh, Ken Dallafor, who played for the Lions, the Steelers, the Chargers, the Michigan Panthers, the Minnesota Golden Gophers, and is a senior vice president of group sales and corporate marketing for BCBSM. That's Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Also ran yesterday, I think in the half marathon, if I'm not mistaken, in downtown Detroit. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Michael Patrick. And yes, I, I ran the half yesterday. Why'd you quit at, at halftime? Because <laughs> it felt like a hole. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it did. Now, did you go over the Ambassador Bridge and through the tunnel and all that sort of thing, too? Yes, the uh, first half of the route, uh, the half marathon, crosses over to Canada and back. So you get to run the bridge and the tunnel coming back. It's, it's a pretty neat experience. Which is tougher to go over the bridge or under the tunnel? Uh, yesterday, for me, was the tunnel, but it was a farther distance uh, than the bridge. So oh. uh, it was a bit warm in there, and it's nice descending down in the tunnel, but coming back up, uh, the incline gets a little a little warm and a little challenging. So I but bet. That was my experience, anyhow. So um, is the incline coming out of the tunnel uh, tougher than the incline on the bridge? Uh, it, like I said, I think it was for me because it was just farther along into the race. It was at uh, about the eight-mile mark as opposed to the three-mile mark. Yeah. Were you happy with your time? I was happy to finish, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Actually, the time wasn't bad. It was two hours and one minute. So good. Seemed like an awfully nice day for it. That was beautiful, and uh, it was nice to see all of the people down there. Uh, I think there was almost 20,000 people participating in the event, whether it was a half, a whole, or a relay, and the town was abuzz. Too bad you couldn't have had a home Lions game because you could have just run right over to Ford Field and watched your old team play, huh? <laughs> that would have been nice, uh, except... Uh, yeah, uh, what the heck? I mean, the results yesterday again. It's just there's a much better football team playing though. I think these days, and uh, it makes it interesting. And boy, they have interesting games with all the injuries and the nuances of the game and the turnabouts. And uh, they're actually they're fun to watch this year. I think Michael, they're at least exciting, and they're on the edge of winning big all the time. Yeah, I mean, it went right down to the end, and how long has it been since we get to watch a Lions game go right down to the end? Every single game this year has gone right to the end, and that makes it entertaining. And yesterday there was all sorts of extra wrinkles. I, I, sometimes I think the Lions are a little snake bit. They have strange penalties happen. Uh, like, I never have ever seen a penalty where a guy was penalized for blocking a guy out of bounds. Uh, the Lions had that penalty. I mean, that doesn't happen very often. Well, it's one of aggressiveness, but it's definitely known uh, as a special teams player uh, that, that you cannot do that. And it's unfortunate they got called for that. And, and it's the timing of the penalties, too, uh, that gave field position. Yeah. And then when you look at uh, some of the other penalties, uh, they brought Nate Burleson's uh, big uh, gainer back and things like that. They had, I think, 11 or 12 penalties, and that's just way too many, and they do that week in and week out. They, they have to... They have to eliminate that. I thought, too, there were some passes that were catchable. That's easy for me to say sitting on an easy chair, but uh, <laughs> there were some catchable passes that got through receivers' hands. Uh, that, that was true, and including the last interception. Uh, Pedigree went up and looked like he should have made that catch and went through his hands. I know he had, had to leap high, but nonetheless, uh, that was one, and there were several others, but um, there's always going to be a few, but it seems to be more than more than we'd like to see. Yeah, I mean, had he caught that pass, I mean, he was he was uh, inside the 15. I think he would have had a chance to score, or at least put them in position to score. And uh, maybe the surprise of the game was that Drew Stanton ended up playing quarterback, and all of a sudden there you have Sean Hill with his arm in a sling. Nobody expected that. And then when uh, Stanton got hit at the end there, going to the last drive, I guess uh, Matthew Stafford was ready to run into the game, and I thought, here's a Bobby Lane moment. He's going to come in off the bench after being out since game one and drive him down the field and win. That was uh, the writer in me wanting to have a creative finish, right? That would have been a huge story. In fact, Matthew was on the field with his helmet on, and I think uh, it was a, a timeout or something, or it, it allowed them to uh, get uh, Stanton back on his feet, put him back in the huddle. Otherwise, yeah, Matthew was going to... Matthew was going to have to go, but Drew Stanton did a nice job, I thought, <clears throat> under the circumstances against a real tough defensive front mm. and playing on the road. So I think he did. I think he really, uh, 
increased his value to the team with that performance. Well, the Lions get uh, an off week next week now, and uh, now there is no question that uh, Matthew Stafford will be back as the starting quarterback, particularly if Sean Hill is is injured. And it makes the transition a little bit easier for anybody who might have thought, you know, Sean Hill was the hot hand, why not leave him in there? Now he's got, you know, his arm in a sling. So that takes care of that. Yeah, controversy over and uh, hot hand, uh, unfortunately, a uh, broken forearm. Um, but uh, it's nice to know Sean, Sean Hill's, got that kind of talent when we need to call on him too so and and drew stanton so uh, that that really bodes well for the lions they have all three of those guys playing well um your old team the golden gophers fired their coach apparently on the weekend in the middle of the season did that, does that surprise you no it, it doesn't in light of the performance and the record uh they were supposed to be a far better team this year than their record is currently and i think the the University of Minnesota's made some huge investments. They've built the new stadium. They've got all the right all the right uh, pieces to have a successful football program. And uh, unfor- unfortunately, Coach uh, Brewster wasn't getting it done, so they made the change in the middle of the season. What's the point of firing a college coach in the middle of the year, though? I think it's uh, I think it's to send a, a message um, to the alumni, to the folks involved with the program, and to the players. Um, and then it also gives them a chance to start an early search where if you do it at the end of the season, um, you don't uh, have that same advantage. So that those would be some of the advantages. Obviously the disadvantages are disrupting the, the season, but it's already pretty much shot for the Gophers. Um, what is it shot for the uh, Cowboys now? They were really hoping to make the Super Bowl and play in their own fancy brand-new stadium, and they lost to Brett Favre yesterday and the Vikings. Jerry Jones has said, no coaches will be fired as a result of the record, but uh, wow, he's got to be fit to be tied. Oh, I know. He thought he had all the parts uh, for the Dallas Cowboys to, uh, you know, make a run for the Super Bowl this year, and and, and they're not out of it mathematically, but uh, it certainly puts them at a disadvantage. I think uh, with uh, one win and uh, four losses is not a good position to be in. So, but yeah, that was a, that was a good hard-fought game, too, with uh, Brett Favre and the Vikings coming out on top. And they were they were in a must-win situation, too, or their season was, you know, the lights were getting dim. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I saw something happen in that game. <laughs> there was a touchdown for the Cowboys. In fact, if you're watching on Fox 47, we're seeing it right now on the screen. And uh, it was it Roy Williams caught the touchdown and stood perfectly upright in the end zone, and another player came and leapfrogged over him while he was standing straight up. So this guy got himself six feet into the air uh, over the top of his head, and uh, it was one of the neatest things I've ever seen. Of course, the yellow flag came out, and they, they fined the Cowboys for excessive uh, you know, demonstration, excessive celebration or whatever. I mean, yeah, I, what about that? I just, you know, that stuff drives me crazy because it, it's drawing away from the team and the objective of the team. You know, you like to have fun, but that was clearly orchestrated. And it was clearly a foul, and then sets them back on the ensuing kickoff, and then they kick the ball out of bounds. I mean, those kinds of things. That's why that's why the Cowboys' record is what it is uh, this year. Uh, it's just it's fun, it's interesting, but it's really not uh, going to help the team win games. And, <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, that's what uh, everybody's paid to do. They're not paid to play football and have fun. They're paid to win football games. The, the look on the coach's face was just. <laughs> He was like, and then I thought I saw him say, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, he utter dismay. What, 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 what could he say or do? It's like, uh, yeah, boy, that, that, that just makes coaches, uh, that makes them old and uh, makes them retire sooner. I don't know, but don't don't you think the league's a little silly? I mean, this is show business after all. And I remember that the, the uh, Redskins used to make a circle in the corner and do that dance and all that business, and then there was the icky shuffle, and then, of course, that receiver in Cincinnati got a little bit carried away with it there. But but why don't they just let the players have some fun after they score a touchdown? What's the big deal? Uh, I, it, it, well, there's a, there's a number of things. I guess some of it has to do with marketing of the uh, product in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't know that that aligns with their sort of marketing objectives, but and then it gets it gets a bit uh, antagonistic to the opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and believe it or not, Sundays are play for keeps out there, and it's really intense. And, and those kinds of things uh, flare and show up in other parts of the game, which gets a little dangerous when you start turning the dial up on the emotions that are already really high. So, 
I, I, there's a little fun, a little sort of parameter to play in that stuff. I so think. the Packers, when they score a touchdown, it's okay for them to jump uh, virtually into the stands and do that thing in the end zone they do. But uh, you can't have a little leapfrog in the end zone, huh? Subjective, <laughs> yeah, it is. I don't, I don't know where I don't know where the lines are and the difference, Michael. But it's a good mm-hmm. point. And yesterday, saw the Miami Dolphin uh, receiver uh, going for a touchdown and give the old fake leap into the Lambo, the Lambo leap. And, <laughs> uh, so he was having fun. So that's where it starts going back and forth. And it, and I think they're just trying to not have it take away from the game, but just let it be fun to the game. Looks like the Spartans are not only playing for the Big Ten championship now, they're alone atop the Big Ten, but they're playing for the national championship, number seventh ranked in the BCS standings. Isn't that great? I, and, and my goodness, uh, what a football team they've turned out to be this year, and uh, their defense seems to be playing uh, uh, beyond probably at least what, as a spectator, would have thought what the expectations were. So keep it going. Go, go Spartans. Now, I know you're coming in for the Minnesota game eventually when the Gophers come here later in the season, so uh, just just be careful in your rooting, okay? I'll come in with a bag on my head and certainly expect the Spartans to beat up on them this year. Um, I'm going to be in your neighborhood Thursday. I'm coming down to tape the uh, Michigan Matters TV show, that political TV show with Carol Kane over at uh, CBS Detroit. So I'll let you know if you're around that day. Maybe we can catch up. Otherwise, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. What's your record now picking the Lions? You're keeping track? Yes, uh, I, I, uh, I have two wins, two although wins. the Lions only have one. My, my record uh, is too correct so far, Michael. Well, they're tough to figure this year. That's all you can say. Ken Dallafor, Senior Vice President, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, Group Sales and Corporate Marketing, but he blocked for Barry Sanders and Terry Bradshaw and Dan Fouts when he was back in the league. And the Lions almost pulled one out yesterday. They made it interesting anyway. 35 after the hour, Michael Patrick Shields back in a flash.